back to the India Mushroom Summit 2023 as we resume our afternoon session. For our last session for the day, the agenda is Opportunities and Challenges of the Industry, Part 2. The session will be chaired by Mr. Vijay. He's an ex-mushroom development officer, agriculture production department, Jammu and Kashmir. Presently, he is working as mushroom consultant and advisor since 2017. He has a 30 plus years of experience in mushroom cultivation at various levels. He has worked on different projects, both in India and abroad. Please welcome him. Moving on, our first speaker for the session is Mr. Manmohan Malik the founder, chairman, and CEO of Himalaya Food Internationals Limited. Mr. Malik embarked on a remarkable journey in 1979, having nothing but a single penny in his pocket. With unwavering determination, he laid the foundation of Himalaya Food International with a small greenfield project in a developing region of India. What makes his story even more extraordinary is that his educational background was rooted in physics and law. However, through sheer grit, he evolved into self-taught business leader of exceptional reputation. We are certain that his insights and experience will inspire us all. Please join me in extending a warm welcome to Mr. Manmohan Malik, a true exemplar of determination, resilience, and entrepreneurial spirit. We welcome you, sir. Thank you very much, dear. Uh, I would just say that I was thrust into business. I became an entrepreneur by chance of destiny, though I wanted to be an astronomer when I was studying physics at Delhi University. Uh, however, the journey has been very good. I would like to share my experiences I'm not going to present you with anything, how to uh, make money from specifically from mushrooms. But I'm open for all the questions that you may have uh, for, uh, uh, that might relate to my entrepreneurial journey, which you will all, most of the youngsters sitting over here, they would uh, embark upon it in their career. Uh, to give you a bit, bit of mushrooms, it's an exciting journey. Mushrooms themselves are very exciting. As they say, they, they grow like mushrooms. If you could put some slow speed camera and put in the room and you can see how beautifully it emerges in 24 hours, the size doubles or whatever. People believe that it's very easy. It is easy. But the focus is required, and I would say that I have been more of a grower, um, less of a grower than an entrepreneur. Uh, though I chipped in my knowledge of physics and whatever I learned in my college uh, to do more and better things and think better, like I suggested that culinary mushrooms is one part where India has yet to make its mark. We are quite low as you, as someone point, uh, earlier speaker pointed out, that China has 50% of the world's production, while we have larger population than China right now, but we are nowhere in the world map of mushrooms. With so much agro waste all around us in India, especially you can see these winter months, as we all know that what has happened to Delhi with AIQ going as high as 700 to 900. So, but something has to be drastically changed in the mindset of this country to propagate such industry as mushrooms, which can be boon for our environment, we can use mycelium and mushroom in various ways uh, where uh, we can reduce the pollution, especially talking about 
the paddy growing states surrounding Delhi, like uh, Punjab, uh, is, has emerged as one of the largest paddy growers in this North, in North India and generates around 17 to 18 million tons of uh, paddy straw every year. And that is burnt uh, indiscriminately, and that's how the whole region is suffering. But at the same time, saying that we can use this paddy straw into mushrooms will not solve the environmental problem. It was too small. Like three kgs of straw will give you one kg of mushroom. So 17 million tons of straw would mean five million tons of mushrooms which be, would be mind-boggling. But at the same time, some part of it definitely can be consumed in the mushroom industry. Rather, I would say that the farmers themselves, whose crops come somewhere in October, September, October, they have three, four months of good weather with low, lower temperatures, without much investment on air conditioning, they should adopt the ways the Sonipat growers do. And each farmer can become, in his own right, a paddy mushroom, paddy plus mushroom grower, at least for the four or five months till March. So that can mitigate. But besides that, like we have always remained focused on mushroom all around the world, but there has to be a different field connected to mushroom. As Dr. Rekha pointed out that mycelium and mushrooms are as old as the planet is. Our forests are all the underneath the soil. It's all web of communication between all the plantations. So that's where we need to learn some lessons from uh, nature. And uh, say, for example, I mentioned about mushroom fabric, you may call it mushroom leather, in the traditional terms leather is from animal, but mushroom fabric, which is as sturdy, more beautiful, more colorful, naturally, it can be naturally colorful, as good as the best of the leathers in the world. Similarly, packaging industry, there's so much of waste world around in everything packaging. For example, we all are used to taking some stuff from Amazon. How much packaging is there? Inside, outside, third layer, fourth layer. So much, uh, again, it's a load on the planet. If we could use the mycelium along with paddy straw and convert that into different kinds of packaging, that can eliminate the problem, at least for the north part of India. I'm, I'm trying to integrate the what should be happening in the world, but specifically to India, like North India, we are definitely besieged with this problem of smog every year, year over year, and it's increasing. So there are so many various things that can be done in this field. I would say that government, the normal entrepreneurs can just take small initiatives, but government should come forward, the government of India, as a project that we want to be leaders in almost everything, apart, not just in population growth, but we have to be leaders. We have so many young people over here who are studying in colleges, who can become entrepreneurs themselves. Besides, some, so many research scholars can be built here who can lead the world in new ways, not only just button mushroom. Button mushroom is all over the world. We, let's not just focus on button mushroom. There are other mushrooms too, but the market is slow. But apart from that, focus on mycelium also as, as the same family. Mushroom is what is, I base is mycelium. If we can focus at the research level more towards mycelium, like uh, mycelated grains, this is one area where like you, you, some of you might have read the books like uh, grain drain, or there, there was another book on which, uh, uh, like, uh, 
gluten has be become the major culprit for the inflammations within the body. So suppose uh, if we can develop a particular mycelium that if wheat grain is myceliated and it eliminates the gluten out of that wheat, the wheat, the same wheat becomes much more healthier. Of course, the mushroom benefits are there, mycelium benefits are there, but gluten is eliminated. So similarly, these are the fields where we need to start thinking at certain level in India. Besides, smaller, younger uh, entrepreneurs should crop up uh, with the objective to cater to a local market of, say, five kilometer radius, like you can deliver home to home, you can create your own job, you can make your own money. So there are a lot of avenues for India. India is red hot uh, place for development of entrepreneurship, and we have a lot of people here. Uh, I would also say our partners from mushroom industry from overseas, like Stuart and Bart, like uh, they can think of making their knowledge base over here, employ some of, some of the youngsters studying in our colleges, and make it local. You have your money from your domain knowledge, but you will have much cheaper uh, resources, scientific resources, as well as a much bigger market. Like India, India's middle class is more than the entire population of US and Europe. So this is the place, if we really see, if we go by price power parity, this already is the biggest market. If we talk in terms, multiply the same thing in terms of PPP, we, we, our economy is as big as America today. Though we don't realize ourselves, my barber at home takes 500 rupees. If I go to his shop, he takes 50 rupees in my place where my farm is there. While the same barber, if you go over there, it is uh, maybe five pounds, 10 pounds. So, so here, same level is here in everything. So we have very potential educated resource here in our colleges, which can be gainfully employed at much cheaper the cost. And this, this country can become the powerhouse for the development of new technologies. Of course, you can have, you have the, everyone has that protection feeling that we protect. That patents and laws are very well applicable in India, but you can do a lot over here. I think I've said enough, and uh, if you have any questions, any one of you, it shall be my pleasure. Take care, I hope you are not hurt. Hello. So, any questions, please? Any questions from the audience? Yes, please. Uh, I'm not the uh, I hope I'm a little audible. Yeah, yeah, you come here, come here. The seats are here. I think this week. Sir, one minute. I would like to introduce Mr. Uh, sir, my name is Arvind Ji. This podium is being supplied by Arvind Ji. Oh, thank you. He told me the first thing. It's a good one. Uh, thank you, Arvind. Thank you, Arvind, for acknowledging. But uh, my idea was this uh, mushroom automation is one excited subject which I took up once I get associated with the I was not knowing that there is such potential about automation in the show. But when I got in touch with him, I found this is a really booming thing. And when I did two farms, which I did automation, I found there is a lot of knowledge uh, which is imparted to real automation guys. We can form a model which will be more, more intelligent by itself. Like what kind of CO2 sensors you have to use, what kind of temperature radiation you have to use. But, um, I mean to say, if suppose we have a standard, some standardization, then those standardizations can be converted into automation. And once it is converted into automation, 
then the production of mushroom will be of high quality and will be of without any skilled labor. So you know you are, you are going to be away from the skilled labor. Every time you have to train your person and then the person moves away and then you are back to your system. So my submission to all the people who have got associated here, if we form a, 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 a such a platform where such information can be, can be get together, which will help automation companies to form a, a generic, a generic platform. Okay, if you do this, you are going to get this out. If you do this, you are going to get this out. I'm sure uh, this will definitely go in a big way. So this is what is my submission. Because I feel all of you who are into this autumn, uh, autumn, uh, who are into mushroom business, uh, there are people who are with 20 years of experience. There are people who want to be into the business. So the people with 20 years of experience have a different experience. But the new generation, if they go by the technology, this will be very, very beneficial uh, for the for the whole mushroom society. This is what is my solution. And in case any idea comes to you, uh, me, I will come forward. <coughs> With whatever set of my knowledge, uh, and I will be, uh, I will be happy to, ha I will be happy to come forward and do this kind of experimentation to all those scientists, researchers who have got any such idea where they are looking for such a system integration partner. Maybe I can be, I, I can be willing to come forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, let me let me say that here, this gentleman is sitting from automation, Fancom. So it's better that uh, you try to collaborate with him if, if he is willing. Because developing everything on our own, why not start from what has already been developed? And fine tune it to the Indian circumstances. One problem is there with the overseas uh, uh, helpers in the mushroom industry is they are attuned to the colder climates, mostly Europe and US. But here we have to develop the local resources based on our agroclimatic conditions, plus what resources are available here. Like we have paddy straw, which is a menace right now. We have a mustard straw. We don't have hay grass, which has very high nitrogen. So we need to develop the things over here to our local circumstances. So that's a very good idea, and I think that's where the collaboration is required all over the world and not just specific to India or Europe or America. One, one, line, one last line before I end up, and I know I'm disturbing the schedule. India is a growing economy. So we are huge. We, the country from uh, Kerala, uh, from Tamil Nadu, is huge. Everywhere there's a huge population. And that is what the time when foreign companies who are big in technology, if they collaborate with Indian partners, the size of the business which they expect to be in Europe or in Asia or, or US. The India, India alone can contribute much bigger economy as compared to the rest of the nation. They all know it. So, so they, that is they, they, you don't have to educate them on that. They know. So what I stated is that our middle class is more than the whole population of America and Europe. Definitely, we both sides have to come forward yes. in a mutually without beneficial doubt, way. And without any doubt, we can collaborate because the time is for collaboration only. Absolutely. So it's adding up the knowledge, not discovering on our own. Uh, the law of gravity is already there. You don't have to go back and see the apple again. So same thing is there, what is already developed. We just can fine tune it to our circumstances. Absolutely. That is very really important from our country Absolutely. Absolutely. That is one aspect which should be I totally agree with you, but low cost development does not mean less profit. Mind it. You will have more volume. Maybe ten times more than what you are used to. Your ma I mean, develop the technologies fine-tuned to India at lower cost, but your volumes will be much larger as India has yet to emerge in mushrooms. Taking the example of China, 50%. We are not even 2%. We are not even 1% of mushroom 
in the whole world. So the whole field is open. Absolutely. Totally. Any more questions? Cost is a welcome uh, step uh, in our uh, own uh, inherent conditions. But as far as the, uh, I know that if you have to uh, moderate your technologies and come up to the expected lines, both in respect of production and productivity, uh, then we have to forego this concept of low cost technologies. Because in the modern worlds, the technologies are to be uh, paid for the prices which they have developed and all that. So uh, we should not compromise. We should have this uh, idea in mind that we have to be on the uh, cost effectiveness uh, of the mushroom growing for each and every uh, aspect of the mushrooms. But uh, we have to see that we cannot compromise on the quality and the production. That's how we can take it forward. Thank you very much, sir. I agree with you, Mr. Dr. Kao, but I would say one thing. My personal life experience, I entered mushroom field way back in 1991. And uh, I was talking to Dalsame at that time. Uh, I hope that still exists, Dalsame. Yeah, they are no DMP. All, all, yeah, all the okay. So they offered a technology key turn project, uh, turnkey project, giving you the whole machinery was at that time around 8 to 10 million dollars and buying back the produce. That was one bad thing that happened to mushroom industry in India. They sold a lot of these technologies with buyback. They sold their machineries. They had certain rates for ex export of mushrooms, but mushroom market collapsed. They had already sold their machineries. They had made their money, but uh, at that stage, they backed out from their buyback arrangements. So I would say, Dr. Carl, we have to be wise in India. We don't have to f follow them blindly. We have to go with our circumstances. At that time, I was offered a telescopic compost loading line for a million dollars. And it, that same job could be done by, say, 20 people. So at that time, the wages were 50 rupees. So you compute 20 into 50 and then million dollar biage was, was that time the interest rate was 20%. So we did not do it. A lot of people did it and they failed. So we, you, ha you have to fine tune depending on your economic condition, depending on your employment condition. So India has a lot of manpower. We don't need entirely automation. We need to be selectively automated, not, not blindly. They, in Europe and uh, America, in terms of dollars, wages may be around $15 an hour, around. Maybe Europe is more expensive. But here, your wages are hardly what? 60 rupees an hour, 8 hours, 500 rupees. So it is less than a dollar. So we, we have to see what we have to do. So it is totally depending on your choice, whether you want to go to totally sophisticated automation or you want to go for the partial automation. Any more questions? Yes, please. So my question is that, uh, as we know, machine has so much potentials, but uh, the whole India, the, pe the common people, they don't know about it. And how can we Spread the information, like, how do we explain that mushroom actually holds so much so that we can uh, increase the production of it? That's a very good question, and that's the main thing. In India, we need to propagate what is good about mushroom. Not only good, how, how better tasting it is, or what are the benefits. So here is the role I, I, I am going to write to the government of India to make something like the mushroom board of India, like egg board of India, so that mushroom is propagated to, the, to every household, what, what it is. And then the, it should not be, it should not be production-led demand, but demand-led production. There should be like a proper advertisement from all the college people, all the students, and, you know, everybody who is aware of the government potential of mushroom, we all should do some advertisement for it. 
Yeah. Absolutely. I think government has to chip in here. Uh, as a company, we did a lot around 20 years back. We spent a million dollars at that time on radio and newspapers and all that. That was the era of newspapers. But uh, some, some th but the government can do better than the private entrepreneurs. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Manmohan Malik, for his elaborate talks on the mushrooms. Uh, his visionary uh, things uh, in the field of mushrooms are uh, in the forefront of uh, development in ag agriculture, especially in mushrooms. And uh, he is very enthusiastic about uh, the further uh, increasing the uh, this byproducts of the mushroom by way of uh, this uh, scaling of different items uh, from mushroom mycelium and all that. Thank you very much, sir. Our next speaker will be Mr. Stott Whitehall. He is from United Kingdom, and uh, as we know that uh, the production and productivity has to be counter-effective, and uh, there are ways and means to increase the production. And one of the uh, ways and means is by supplementation. So, Mr. Stott Hall will uh, talk about increasing your bottom line yields, quality, and profit with supplementation. Please, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies, gentlemen, and esteemed guests. Thank you for inviting me to this uh, international mushroom event, this first one in India. Very grateful to Anurag for all he's done for organising and all the sponsors as well. I think you'll all agree that they've done an amazing job for this first international event. The subject today I'm going to talk about is supplementation and how it can be used to help to increase your yield, quality and profit. Where is the... Okay. The pointer. Okay. Yeah. And that's the advance. Okay. So first of all, what is supplementation? Supplementation has been around for a long time. It started in the 1960s. It was started in the USA uh, by a couple of researchers in Penn State University. It's basically the addition of nitrogen compounds after pasteurization. And more specifically, that nitrogen source is protein, uh, what's called amino-based, as opposed to what you make with compost, which is ammonium-based nitrogen compounds. And one of the examples of this is soya meal, which is very commonly used throughout the world. Also it is, although it's primarily used in phase three situations all over the world, it is also very effective in phase two as well, which is why I want to talk about it today. Uh, a very good example of a market which does use this is uh, the USA. Uh, and they use it because they have low nitrogen composts and they gain significant benefits from this. So compost supplements, they're all based on feedstuffs as a base and all these different feed stuffs they all have different characteristics they all have different protein levels they all have different carbohydrate levels lipids which are fats cellulose and hemicellulose as well as minerals so what we're able to do is to actually blend these different ingredients together to get a combination of what we want or more specifically what the mushroom wants there were many materials tested in the early days and there were a lot of challenges, particularly with heating because when we add these products to the compost they generate heat and also they can also encourage capacitor moulds because as well as feeding the mycelium, which is a mould, it can also feed other moulds as well. And of course the biggest challenges were when we add it at spawning time. So if compost, for example, is not very well made, uh, has some issues or some issues with pasteurization, it can be found that the supplement not only feeds the mushroom mycelium, but also the moulds that are present because of non-uniform compost. The supplement 
needs to be mixed very evenly in the compost, much better than, say, for example, spawn. Also, it's important to delay the release of the supplement food source so it comes in when your mushrooms are actually growing and they actually need that food source. And of course, that is different between phase three and phase two. So in your phase two situation, if we apply it at spawning, we need the effect to come in some four or five weeks later. So the source of these, we started to use animal feedstuffs. Uh, and some ideas were taken from animal production. This is back in the 60s and the 70s, because they were using protein compounds treated with formaldehyde. And this gave way to a solution for how to delay the release of the nutrition to the mushroom crop as well. Formaldehyde is quite a unique uh, chemical, because when it reacts with protein, it creates like a skin or a surface on the outside of the protein particles. And this skin actually slows down the mycelium from getting into the supplement, hence the delay release mechanism. This skin also means competitor moles cannot access the supplement so easily and quickly, giving chance for the mycelium to outcompete it. The formaldehyde also has a, a localized hygiene effect as well, but that doesn't last very long. So how is supplement made? It's, pre it's a pretty simple process. First of all, the feedstuffs which are chosen, are ground uh, or milled, whatever expression you want to use. And then we take those ground feedstuffs, we blend them together in a mixer, we add minerals, and then we add the preservative and the delay release. And there are a number of different alternatives here. Uh, most people in the world are using formaldehyde for the delay release mechanism and they'll use a couple of different rates. The higher the rate is, the longer the delay releases. Also, steam treatment can be used as well um, for creating this. And then we're a little bit more unique compared to the other companies. We use a process, a natural process, where we coat the particles with acid salts. Once the product's been, uh, had the uh, preservative added to it, it's then bagged up. And typically, it would look like this. It's usually packed in 25 kilo bags, usually 40 to 50 on a pallet. It can also be sold in big bags as well, but people find it's easier to handle smaller bags. So what's different about our products? I'll just briefly talk about this, say, compared to the formaldehyde products. We've done a lot of research over the years and there are some very important parts to making the supplement work more efficiently. One of the elements is to create a finer, a finer powder as you possibly can. It's a bit like the analogy with spawn where you compare rye and millet. If you have more points of contact, then the mycelium will be able to attack it and be able to eat it quicker and be able to digest it quicker. <laughs> We use a medium level of protein and we use a high level of fat. Fat's very important in supplementation because that's one of the factors that gives you heavy, dense mushrooms. So for us, that's a very important factor. Also, we use 100% plant-based, uh, no chemicals and GM-free. And we use a blend of materials, as I showed earlier, to get the optimum nutritional balance for the mushroom. And then we have a unique acid coating for the mold protection, the delay release. How is it applied? <coughs> Usually it's applied in two different ways. Uh, a supplement hopper over a belt. So similar to what you do when you're applying spawn. So you have a hopper and you just have a smaller dispenser at the bottom, which releases the supplement more slowly than the spawn because it's uh, a very fine material. The other way to do it, which is the picture on the left-hand side, is a conveyor belt. So you have a conveyor belt which has got a ridges on it and a hopper at the bottom. So that then basically allows a very uniform uh, situation where the supplement then, when it drops onto the belt of the compost going past, 
is very, very uniform. Mixing is really the key. This is very, very important. Supplement does not work if it's not mixed properly. One of the, the two issues you get are heating and the other is access to the supplements. So on, on the left hand example, you can see, oh, this thing's gonna work here. So I'm gonna use, oops. This one here. So you can see here, the supplement particles are very evenly distributed. So the mycelium can work there. There's not gonna be any overheating in any area there. This right hand one is you've got too much supplement in these areas and not enough in these areas. So what happens is you get excess heating here, plus also there's too much food there for the mycelium to, to digest, so it doesn't digest it. In this area here, there's not enough food to digest. So this area here is just not effective at all. So you may get the same result as if you've not got supplement at all. So mixing is very, very important. And you've got to realize that there's only a very short period where the mycelium has access in the crop there to get that nutrition source. How much is applied? That depends on the stage of when you're using it. So if you're applying it in the phase two situation of spawning, we're typically putting in between eight and 10 kilos per ton. So Depending on your fill rate, that's going to be something like 0.8 to 1 kilo per square meter. If you're applying it at casing, so in a phase 3 situation, we apply a much higher rate, typically between 10 and 15 kilos per ton. How does the mycelium feed? Now, this is also a very important thing for why the supplement is very, very important. So what I've, what I've done here, that's, that's just an example of the tip of mycelium there, the root of the mycelium. What happens is the mycelium, the way it feeds is it releases enzymes at its tip. And those enzymes break down whatever's in that area. So it's compost or supplements or whatever. And then those, those broken down components get reabsorbed back into the mycelium. And as the mycelium fills up more and more and more, that is what's actually going up into the mushroom. And that's why your mushroom grows so quickly with such an intensity. So you can imagine, based on that, that if you have a good compost, you have stronger mycelium growth. If you have stronger mycelium growth, then you have better enzyme activity. If you have better enzyme activity, you have more breakdown and assimilation of nutrition that's in the compost or in the supplement that's in the compost, then getting brought up into the mycelium and into the growing mushroom. So compost must be stable. Supplement, so what supplement does is it makes a good compost better. For the previous slide, you could probably see there, if a compost is not ideal, and the mycelium is weak and the enzyme activity is weak, you're not necessarily going to get a better result. So supplement always makes a good compost better. Why? As I said, because the spore growth is stronger, so the mycelium is feeding and is much due to the enzyme activity in the mycelium roots and tips. What are the typical benefits of supplement? Typically, the yield increase can be 10% plus. The benefit to cost should typically be something in the, in the region of five to one or better. You should see a quality improvement assuming good management. So for example, if you imagine that the supplement is gonna produce some compost activity and some temperature, you need to have a good climate to be able to control that temperature. Also, higher temperature can drive uh, the temperature or the, or the speed at which the mushrooms are growing. So again, that can affect quality. So again, quality improvement depends on good management. So it all depends on the skill of the grower. Now, those points there are primarily about phase three. Um, 
the, the typically the benefits with phase two are about 50% of the above. So you should still expect to see significant yield increases, all conditions being right, of 5% plus. Things you've got to be aware of, which we've kind of talked a few things about. Uh, poor mixing, as I explained before. If you get poor mixing, you could get overheating, or you could get little or no yield increase. Temperature spikes, so good cooling is needed. What happens in the phase two situation is that when the mycelium starts to consume that supplement and starts to utilize it, it creates heat. So usually seven to eight days after spawning in phase two, you'll start to get a kick up in temperature. In a phase three situation, this happens within one or two days after casing. Now in phase two, of course, it's easier to control because in phase two, your watering pattern is very different to phase, phase two, because in phase three, you're actually watering through the casing into the compost, so you have a cooling effect. But in phase two situation, you're only watering the casing. Also, supplements is best in shelves and trays, where it can be mechanically mixed from say phase two or phase three tunnels. Mixing, mixing of supplement in bags and blocks is challenging to get a uniform application, particularly when you, when you apply it into the bags or the blocks and you then transport those bags and blocks over some distance and that, that supplement can migrate within the blocks or bags. Extra yield means extra water and ventilation to maintain quality. Warmer temperatures may drive picking speed. And be aware of supplement particles sticking to or damaging spawn grains. Because the one thing you don't want to do is, for example, to mix the supplement with the spawn. Because you'll damage the spawn, you'll slow down the growth, and you could encourage weed molds. Other suggestions. Start at low rates and build up. Start cooling early and don't wait too long until it starts spiking. Higher spawning rates can help reduce weed molds. Yield from each flush should increase in proportion. So in other words, you'll get a higher first flush than you normally get, a higher second flush than you normally get, and a higher third flush than you normally get. And this yield comes from more pinheads and more mushrooms, as well as heavier and denser mushrooms. You should store supplements in a dry place. Typical shelf life is six months. One of the things that may be worth considering, I don't know if it's something that's done over here, but when you're, we used to use in the UK before we had phase three available, we had something called phase two and a half where we took spore run compost that uh, we'd spore run we broke it up and then we refilled that into shelves and we added supplements at that point. So in other words, it was at casing stage. So the mycelium was fully grown, so it was safer. So it created some advantages over the disadvantage of phase two alone. But I don't know if that's suitable to India or not. It's just a suggestion. Supplement can also be used in a variety of different mushroom species. Uh, <coughs> So, for example, oyster mushrooms, shiitake, uh, all these different species. Supplements used in a slightly different way there. It tends to be added prior to pasteurization or sterilization. So in the substrate itself, it's much safer to put it in at that stage because the mycelium tends to be weaker in these other alternative species. Plus it gives a good opportunity to mix it in very uniformly. The future, uh, we've done a lot of research and development in supplementation over many years. We did a lot of work with the original type of supplements, looking at all sorts of different materials to try to find variations which could produce more yields more quickly. We tried all sorts of combinations, you would not believe. We probably tried hundreds of combinations with different compounds, 
different starch levels, different protein levels. And we tried everything to see if we could get higher results. And after all those results, we got some improvements, but they, they weren't as big as you, think, as you thought they would be. And then that got us thinking, why is this happening? Because if you produce a supplement that was very, very easily available with, a, say, a very high carbohydrate content, in theory should be better than a high protein content and more available, it wasn't the case. So that put us onto the idea that maybe it's not just the nutrition of those components we put into the substrate, but it's more to do with the availability of them. So this is what put us onto the roots of liquid supplementation. So we also have in our product range a range of liquid supplements. So this is a different approach. And we've done a lot of work over many years on this, and we've actually found that their most effective point is to apply them during the crop to top up what has already gone already. Um, if you think about a typical first frost situation, you probably utilize 50% of the nutrition in the compost in a very short period of time. Then there is a recovery then to, co to come back again very quickly. So if we can add nutrition at that point in time, we find it's very, very helpful. So we apply this directly onto the crop. We apply it after the first flush, typically from overhead or by drip irrigation within the casing. And we only use it at very low rates, typically between 60 and 120 mils per square metre. What are the advantages? We get an increase in yield, kilos per square metre. We can increase the quality of the mushrooms. That's the big thing. The mushrooms, which are usually going softer at the end of the flush, they stay harder to the end. So what that means is the mushrooms keep their weight, they don't lose weight. We also, because the quality is better and the mushrooms are heavier, we have more dry matter in the mushrooms. So we get an increase in the shelf life. Also, interestingly, uh, because of the components we use for preserving, the natural preservatives, we actually get a lot of people who tell us they get an increase in disease protection against casing moulds. And the other advantage is there's little or no temperature activity. So for the Indian market, what, I, what I've seen in talking and advising growers here over the last couple of years is two main challenge areas. Lower yields from lower nitrogen composts and also casing material that doesn't hold water very well, which means that you have to continuously water, which leads to deep pinning, often blotch and dirty mushrooms. So my opinions, these are only my opinions, some solutions for the yield side. Of course, the obvious one is always we're working to make compost more consistent all the time. The second thing is using supplements as an extra nitrogen source could boost production during cropping. And the consideration of working with fully spore run compost, either phase two and a half or phase three, particularly phase three. Solutions for quality, maybe the adoption or alternatives to overhead irrigation. Uh, one of the ideas of this is drip irrigation. These are pipes which fit inside the casing. I'm going to send you a, show you a small video shortly uh, after this slide. This is watering from, uh, so it gives you the ability to water from underneath at all times because the pipes are inside the casing layer, which means you can continually water when mushrooms or pins are present. It means the casing never dries out. There's no blotch, less energy use because you're not having to dry the mushrooms after you've watered them, and it gives you the ability to add liquid supplement throughout. So you can see here the pipes in the casing sat on top of the compost there, and then the casing on top of that. That's a manual installation. The one below it is in an automated system with uh, phase three, 
where the pipes are put in automatically as you fill the rooms. I'd just like to, sh I'd just like to show a quick video which just shows that irrigation system because I think it could be interesting for this market uh, and then I'll take any questions after that. I'm going to put the volume down. The volume Thank you. Is... Uh, if there are any questions, please. So, 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 just... Okay. Okay, the video first. So this is this is the automatic system. This is a phase three farm in Canada, and this is in real time. So it's uh, the putting of the pipes. In, it is actually a pretty quick process. And of course, in a phase two situation, these pipes could just be laid manually on the compost prior to the casing going on. Yes, yeah, so those are not familiar with this, this is a typical phase three filling situation. So the compost and the casing is pulled into the beds at the same moment. This is a system of production that's used all over the world. Two minutes. Okay. It's just about two minutes. So these are the connections which go on. So once the piping's inside the compost and casing, then manifolds are put on the end and the whole system is filled up with water. But they have special holes in which don't allow the water to come out and the water only comes out when it gets to a certain pressure and it just drips out. This is how the pipes are pulled out at the end of the operation. Uh, and these pipes are reused over and over again. Uh, this particular farm, they've actually been using the pipes now for almost four years. So, Thank any, you. any questions? Uh, I would uh, suggest that uh, we will invite the next speaker and take all the questions at the end of the session because uh, of the paucity of the time. Uh, so, I would invite Mr. Anurag Saxena, uh, the man who doesn't need any introduction, uh, who has revolutionized the mushroom technologies by way of the introduction of uh, very smart things in the spawn production as a CEO of the Milky Way Technologies and as an architect of the present mushroom india mushroom summit 2023 please join me in uh, applauding mr saxena
सर मैं तब तक गुड आफ्टरनून फ्रेंड्स गुड आफ्टरनून आई नो रिसेंटली आई वॉज इन डच मशरूम डेज हम लोग सब जानते हैं कि डच फार्म्स में क्रॉप uh, ज़्यादा आती हैं हमारे यहाँ कम आती हैं आप लोगों को पता है इसका कारण क्या है कैन एनी वन टेल किसी को नहीं पता यू नो यू वॉन्ट टू नो हाउ यू कैन इंक्रीज योर गीड्स कितने लोग जानना चाहते हैं आई विल टेल यू ऑल द डच पीपल डू एन एक्सरसाइज इन देयर फार्म्स टू इंक्रीज यू वॉन्ट टू नो दैट एक्सरसाइज आप लोग जानना चाहते हो Yes. Please get up. All of you, please get up. Wait a minute. Okay. Now raise the hand. Other hand also. One second, one second. Raise your. Stretch. No, 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 no. Okay, one minute, guy. Three times. लिरिक्स नहीं चाहिए छोड़ो इफ यू डू दिस यू विल बी एक्टिव एंड यू कैन वर्क स्मार्टली टू इंक्रीज रन दो स्क्रीन ऐसी रन मंत्र ऑफ द डे नाउ आई आई एम थैंक्स फॉर मिस्टर डैनियल एंड एग्रो प्रोजेक्ट्स फॉर स्पॉन्सरिंग द लंच वी जस्ट हैड and uh, i know the lunch was very tasty and people have eaten a lot and they must be feeling little sleepy so the exercise was for that you should be able to hear me attentively ha nahi rehne dena wale ho gaye jaag gaye sab jaag gaye मुझे लग रहा था अगर लोग नहीं उठे तो आई विल प्ले द नेशनल एंथम फिर तो उठना पड़ेगा सो वी वर प्रिपेयर फॉर दैट यूजुअली इन कॉन्फ्रेंसेज सर द फूड इज वेरी हैवी सो द सेक्शन आफ्टर द फूड नीड्स टू बी वेरी हाई एनर्जी सो दैट इट डजेंट अलाउ पीपल टू स्लीप सो कौन कौन ये एक्सरसाइज करने वाला है इन दर मशरूम फार्म अरुण सर इट इज मैंडेटरी फॉर ऑल द वर्कर्स दे मस्ट डू इट एटलीस्ट फाइव टाइम्स इन अ डे Is equal to 90 10 oh great! No, uh, uh, you, I know, sir. You are very active, but uh, the workers they should not fall asleep. <coughs> Sagar ji, आपको भी करनी है ये exercise. Not you, but your team. चला बस <coughs> हमारी ये स्लाइड थोड़ा टाइम ले रही है बट नॉट अ प्रॉब्लम आई वुड लाइक टू शेयर द एक्सपीरियंस एंड द जर्नी फॉर ऑर्गेनाइजिंग इंडिया मशरूम समिट इट वाज एक्चुअली माय विश आफ्टर 2014 when uh, dmr dr manjeet singh uh, uh, organized this conference uh, at nas complex uh, i was there i attended the whole seminar the full conference and i was very much impressed and i always thought that this should happen every year but unfortunately no one took the initiative of organizing that 
after 2014, this is the uh, next uh, event we are doing on mushrooms. And uh, mushroom as such, Manmohan sir is here. He has a very big farm. Monica ma'am is here. Dr. Prasad is here. Uh, so many people are there and they know the industry is very big provided it is organized and it, it goes in a, in a systematic manner. The systems, the processes, the, the keys with which we can improve our productivity are still lacking. We have a farm which is not the right way and I understood this after visiting that mushroom days. Abhi ek mere paas sir the yahan par mujhe lunch mein mile the. He has a farm on Delhi Haryana border, Kundli mein. Sir, aap hoy thar? Nahi hai. He told me that for maine ek ek keel apne saamne khade ho kar lagwai hai. Apne farm mein. Uh, he was proud to tell me that, but this is not a matter to be proud of. If we go to organized companies, they will set up everything for you and you can easily run that project. Hamare saath kya hota hai? Hamen kyunki kit thukwaate hai, phir oh, ye to galat ho gaye. So, hum usse nikal dete. Then we ek jagah aur karte hai, phir kuch karte hai. So, that takes a lot of time, energy and money. <coughs> हमने एक सेशन मॉर्निंग में किया था फॉर कंसल्टेंट्स कंसल्टेंट्स एक्चुअली आर द बैकबोन ऑफ आवर सिस्टम यस आई वुड से कि हमारे कंसल्टेंट्स भी बहुत स्ट्रांग uh, uh, नहीं हैं टेक्निकली बट यस माय सजेशन इज वी मस्ट फॉलो अ कंसल्टेंट हम अपने आप का भी भी मशरूम फार्म लगाने की कोशिश ना करें Maybe you can hire companies like Agro Projects or maybe you can hire an Indian consultant. But a consultant, a guru is a must for a mushroom farm. Never go for a mushroom farm without a consultant. It is very typical, very typical. I even know a farm uh, for last almost 20 years. They were struggling 20 years back. They are in Odisha and still they are struggling to make it a success. Because uh, the owner was a highly educated person and he followed Google to set up his farm. He did not have a consultant. Sir. And this is not the right way. Actually, this is not the right way. We pay a lot of money to lawyers, to doctors, but we don't pay money to consultants of uh, mushroom farms, which is not the correct way of doing it. I agree to my point. And ultimately, what happens? The farms are closed, they don't work, and the industry gets defamed. Mushroom is not a good job. Don't go. Those who have been closed, they all say that the industry is not good. You should wind up. Sir, I have a question. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Anurag Saxena, and I am representing मिल्की वे अब धंधे की बात करते हैं सो मिल्की वे वाज स्टार्टेड इन माय कॉलेज डेज लॉन्ग बैक एंड इट वाज कंसीव्ड इन अ इन द इन अ क्लासरूम नॉट द क्लासरूम इन द यूनियन रूम ऑफ अवर कॉलेज way back in 1989 and from there we thought that we should uh, uh, get into the field of mushrooms and in 1999 I took uh, 1990 I took a mm -hmm. small training from IRI PUSA to start this business we all know what is a spawn a spawn ke bare mein kise nahi pata कोई है ऐसा? So we have educated audience. सबको पता है spawn क्या होता है? अभी मैं खड़ा करके किसी को पूछ लूँगा, फिर उसे सजा भी मिलेगी। 
So good, everyone knows about spawn. I I change. Change. Is it? No. Yes. So my journey was started with this autoclave. We used to make uh, 5 kg or 6 kg of spawn in a day or in 2-3 cycle 10-12 kgs. Now these are the autoclaves we are using and these are some of the very big vessels available in India. Mushroom, I am, I am trying to be very, very brief. Mushroom spawn has a lot of varieties. Many people, many companies have a lot of varieties. All the varieties are good provided it suits your conditions and your environment. Uh, as uh, Sir said, uh, Manmohan Sir said, uh, most of the foreign companies have developed their uh, strains uh, which are suitable to their climate because India is still is way, way behind uh, most of the European countries and we are lacking in R&D also, especially in breeding, we have not done so many developments in spawn. Uh, for the first time in India, Milky Way has introduced a variety called cheetah. This is our contribution in the, to the spawn industry. Uh, we call it cheetah because it is a very fast spawn. It completes your spawn run cycle very quickly and uh, it is reliable because Milky Way is making it. And it gives good strong mushrooms. I, I am sure some of the people must have tried it. But this is one of the contributions in, uh, to the spawn industry from Milky Way. That is all I wanted to say about India Mushroom Summit. I have already discussed that why we are here and why this initiative was started. And I will, uh, I will make sure that uh, this keeps on going. I am thankful to all these people who supported us in managing and organizing this event, especially to set rise and agro projects. Sir, thank you very much. Now, the next event which is coming up is India Mushroom Days. This is on 4th, 5th and 6th of October uh, 2024. I would request that all of you be part of that. Uh, I would openly announce and affirm Sagar Sir ne mujha sponsorship boli hai. I will support you. Sir, I have said to you, I have to give you Anyway, thank you very much. Uh, my message to the mushroom industry is success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. So, जितनी भी समस्याएं आएं आपको रुकना नहीं है you have to keep walking okay keep walking i wanted to say keep working thank you very much that is all from my side Mr. Anurag Sarsena for his valuable sharing of the insights of the agriculture industry, especially the mushrooms, how uh, the grass can be taken uh, on an upward trend and how dedicatedly and passionately his working has resulted into the present day scenario of the Milky Way technologies. He has been very instrumental not only providing the uh, this uh, spawn to the farmers but the way he has conceived the logistic support, the packaging, and the post uh, farm delivery, uh, this farm management technologies by way of helping the growers to have a very sustainable, equitable yield. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, in the next category, uh, as we talk about the mushroom farming, uh, there are two types of things which have to be taken into consideration. First is the innovation. We have to keep up pace with the innovative things, uh, cost effectiveness and sustainability. 
so in this category mushroom farms uh, the one of the prime things what, what we talk about uh, in mushrooms is that our uh, uh, environmental control is our yield control so that's a belief in foreign countries where they are uh, harvesting 35 to 40 percent of the biological efficiency and uh, in india we are still at uh, 20 percent biological efficiency and there's a lot of scope to understand and to execute the things in a way to enhance our production and productivity and for mushroom industry spawn raw materials and then even environmental control or the connecting infrastructure and plant and machinery <laughs> is very important at a uh, uh, given time we can see that uh, we have different options for spawn we can opt for one laboratory or another laboratory we can keep on changing as per the feasibility and the results <coughs> then raw material also we can keep on changing and we can see that uh, this raw material does not suit us we can have the locally available raw materials or some imported ones but in case of infrastructure and the plant and machinery once developed and installed it is the backbone of the mushroom farm and very difficult to change it within a short span of time when our plant is recovering on its economical health so in this category i will invite mr daniel digesti from the agro projects school and who will be talking about the important projects and the modern reliable equipment in place in the mushroom industry. Please welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. My name is Daniel Dajewski. I'm the CEO of AgroProjects and also the co-founder uh, of this business. During this presentation, I would like to show you a little bit about our company, this will be the auto promotion. It's clear that I will show our solution. However, let's start maybe first with some uh, words about Poland because you heard some information already before, even yesterday, about data, about the volumes we produce. That's, let's maybe make this, uh, show these figures once again. Poland, as a country of 38 million population, is producing uh, 350,000 tons white button mushroom a year. It's quite a lot. 70% of that is coming for export. Therefore, you know, Polish mushroom must be really of the very high quality, must compete with the um, mushrooms in, harvested in different countries like Germany, France, UK, or many, many other, others. There's mostly the fresh market. Of course, there is the big part going for canning or pro other processing, but most of the mushrooms are really fresh. They are delivered far, far away. You know, the, f uh, the most further point I could see it was even the Kazakhstan, fresh Marcos, um, uh, 6,000 kilometers. They well delivered. Therefore, the Polish market is very competitive. There is plenty of producers. Mostly the bigger farm, uh, the bigger producers are getting bigger. The smaller are getting slowly out of the market. Uh, the price level of the mushroom farm, uh, which the farmer can get for the mushroom, is very close to your. It's about $2 um, per kilogram. But at the end of the day, everybody is only thinking about the uh, scale, volumes, technology, quality, and uh, fully automation. I fully understand the discussion that and I also speak about it with uh, people visiting um, um, our booth just down below, that uh, India has different raw materials. We cannot have copy-paste of the solution. You have different labor costs. Therefore, not everything can be simply, uh, simply taken. That doesn't make sense even. I want to show you the, our equipment, but I fully understand that you know, during the discussion, many things can be done locally, maybe a different way. But at the end of the day, the financial efficiency is the most important issue of the projects. And if we in Poland can be efficient, develop the market having $2 per kilo, and you have also the same, it means there is a big space, of, uh, space for automation and for doing the things better. It's only the first impression. I'm not the expert. I'm here the fifth day. <laughs> that, that's that's too, too short to say. If you do not agree, please do not agree. I will think it over. But anyhow, let's go through this presentation, just show you. We are going to show you some of our projects just only to inspire you, how does it look like now currently in Europe, but not only in Europe. Uh, and 
I just only wanted to introduce from which market we are going. 350 tons, 50,000 tons, 13 million population, consumption like two kilo per capita, rest is really given for the export. Market is tough, prices are low, break even point. What the farmers are telling me is 28 kilos per square meter below they are in the red figures. You know, it is something like 30 few percent of the, of the compost, you know, weight. Therefore, you, um, you must understand that it's really, it's really tough. Okay, let's start about the company itself. I will go through the company, uh, about the projects, shortly about the equipment and at the end the machines for the, um, for the mushroom farms. I will go very quickly because I think it's just only impression, of course, we don't have time to discuss it. I think it's not even the needed thing in this agenda. Actually, the Agro is the group of more or less two companies. We have some small companies as well, but anyhow, that's the Agro project and company Magic. Why I pointed this out, because Magic, starting from the other right side, is the company with 26 years of the experience with the ventilation, air handling, uh, and also from the very beginning with, in the mushroom industry. But we do also other projects, uh, cold storages, uh, meat factories, meat factories, everything. Agro project is in Poland the general contractor. We build uh, different kind of, uh, kind of projects, not only mushroom farms, again, logistics sensor, cold storages, but mushroom is really our focus. Mushroom is our part of the life. Mushroom is something what we want to develop in the world and this, how we really, we really want, to, where we see our future. Um, we have nine years of experience. I am in the industry only 11 years. But as I said, we accumulate into the, in the group something like 26 of the experience. In the group of these two companies is almost 250 employees, mostly engineers, different kind of people working on the production, people assembling some th things on, on the customer side. But anyhow, we, I think more than half of that is really dedicated for mushroom industry. Only, only day by day. That's how we look like. From the drone picture, you see that a couple of buildings, they were not built on one shot. We also developed step by step, as the mushroom farm should develop too. That's the, our own new building where we produce the mushroom equipment, the, the whole you can see on the, on the picture. You know, as you know, the mushroom is really, the mushroom farm is, is a lot of corrosion inside. We mostly work with metal, therefore we do not work, uh, we mostly concentrate with, uh, with aluminium or, um, uh, or any kind of materials which are really corrosion resist resistant. Therefore the, the machinery you could see here is mostly with the metal, uh, oriented for the metal processing. You see also some pictures directly from the production the, where we produce our, our things. Uh, and let's go now to currently to the projects. I think what is more important uh, to that, if somebody wants to visit us, please feel free. We will send the invitation, go to Europe, see, we can see the, our production. We can see also the uh, Polish farms. What I told already before, we, we are making uh, meat processing plants, warehouses, industrial buildings, but the core, what we do is the mushroom farm, compost yard. Depends on the year, but sometimes it's 45, but sometimes even 70% of the turnover in the group is, is really linked with mushrooms. Uh, we support the customer from the very beginning. Of course, we help with layout, we help with the technology, we help with the very, a lot of data for the business plan because uh, if there are newcomers coming to the business, they do not know really how to create proper business plan. Of course, we produce almost everything for the mushroom farm and the very, very big part for the compost yard in-house. Therefore, every customization can be done by, by, um, in our workshop. Therefore, it's much, much easier to change. Very often we make such changes. We adjust our products just simply to local needs. We make them simpler or more complicated to make it wider, smaller. That's everything what we can do. We, we also make a lot uh, of uh, supervising during this process of the building. We do not force our customers to buy the full project like Turkey. 
we understand that in, in, in here everything can be cheaper. You know, that's uh, steel frames, sandwich panels, especially after this the containers transportation. Therefore, we really want to focus and help you with this, what is the core for the mushroom farm. It means for the climate, proper conditions, when the mushrooms can grow, and the proper technology for that. We, as I said before, we produce uh, all the shelving, picking trolleys, gates, doors, watering system, air handling units, everything in the house, and, uh, and that's, that's very important. We are not afraid to send our people uh, very far for assembling, not only supervisors, because some parts are very important, but also the quality of the assembling is very, 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 very important. And uh, we have also the grower inside of our team who can go and also help with with startup of the farm, train the staff, very often even experienced growers, which they open the very big farm, very big facility, they need to have a support, external support, just to train the staff because the hundreds of new pickers are coming and only part of them stay in the farm. Okay. Projects. I will go smoothly. Let's only look and concentrate on the pictures. There are some last projects from France. You can see on the left side and on the right side some projects of the mushroom farm. The, let's speak about the right one. There is the 22 growing, growing rooms, about 600 square meters each. There is, in front, you can see also four rooms for oyster, which is very seldom to produce in one, one room the same, uh, the different kind of mushrooms. But this is uh, what we built for this customer. Uh, again, there is another farm for the same customer in the south of France, Chasse-Pouzac, close to Lyon. This is the largest project we had ever delivered. Uh, I don't want to say we built, because the construction sandwich panels were done locally. But this is, as you see, almost 100,000 square meter of growing surface up under two roofs, I can say, because there are two buildings, uh, two buildings connected. But this is the project which were developed for four years. You know, no, not, nobody builds such big projects during one stage. Mm -hmm. Behind on the pictures, you can see also the compost yard. Uh, and other, you know, simple projects which were done, for example, in Belarus, Two mushroom farms also built. The second farm was built after after two years, after the first one. The right project is also very interesting. There are the 40 growing rooms, and uh, we started from the middle, only 12 rooms, and all the cold storages, uh, changing rooms were there for the people. Machinery room, uh, boiler room, but then customer could simply expand every year, six, 12 rooms, depends what was his budget for, the, for this year. But of course, the technology, the pipe system, the machinery room and boiler room was prepared for the growth, the diameters, everything was properly done. The four is very good, is always good to know if you want to grow, what is the maximum size that we know it before, because then the extension is much, much easier and much, much quicker. You do not make the mistakes. If you only build separate buildings, then can be a problem sooner or later in the future, even in case chiller is broken or something, something's going wrong. Another producer in Belarus, we built for the guy almost everything. There's a bigger uh, producer in Belarus. Uh, you see a couple of farms on the picture. And for the same customer we built, and it started two years ago, the big compost yard is 1,600 tons of phase three weekly compost. Everything built on one shot. This, what you can see on this picture, is built at once. You know, there, is, there are no stages. Uh, you see here from this picture, straw, different what you have. Under the roof, there is the mixing line. Also will be different for your raw material. There, is the, 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 there are the bunkers for the phase one, uh, under the roof and top filling system behind the very, very big building. The building is more than 200 meters long behind. You know, there are 34 tunnels, 43 meters long, output of approximately 200 tons each. You know, that's, uh, that's the volumes which, uh, which you can get. Therefore, you get this 1,600 tons of phase three weekly. Um, uh, weekly, I don't go into the details. I maybe only show some pictures from, you know, you see from inside, like straw, phase one. 
and also you know the corridor phase two, phase three. This is everything what is delivered by us. With this project, we did with Hoving Holland with the machines for the compost, but the rest was delivered by us also. Fancom equipment is there. Sometimes we built also some logistic things for mushroom farm. You see the very huge mushroom farm behind. There is almost 36,000 square meters growing surface in one building. And then we built the logistics center next to that. We also make this, uh, well, let's call it tunnels. You know, that's a very simple solution with some mineral war uh, as an insulator. This is, for example, Australia. We also do some logistic uh, factories for, um, for mushroom processing. This is the mushroom which mushroom and other fruits and vegetables can be frozen, sliced, whatever. And uh, the, the building first, uh, first one is the very big uh, uh, freeze room with a very huge 16 meter high uh, chambers keeping the ready products uh, already produced. Sometimes we make also adaptation. Not every big hall can be adapted to, to the mushroom farm, but this one is currently on. At the end of this month, will be the first filling you know, of, of this mushroom farm is in France, in the eastern part of France. What I showed, told you before, we built also other project, but let's go smoothly. That is also poultry processing plant, some production and uh, logistics. There's also some mushroom logistics center we also build some chicken farms or, or turkey farms. Uh, Polnek, this is the milk factory, apple factories. We collect experience from different sources there. Are. Let's go shortly through the equipment. Uh, I know that you have different needs. You do not maybe will need a lot of such shelvings and trolley, but let's look what we produce. This is, for example, machinery room, and the bigger one which we did in the containers. This is 3.5 megawatt of cooling power delivered in four containers to Russia four years ago. And uh, why in the containers? Because it's quicker, it's pre-assembled in Poland. Assembling time on the site is very simply. We need uh, simply concrete sleeve and, and connection, you know, power and, and the pipes. Uh, currently, I have to say that, you know, in, in Europe there was a really big energy crisis and currently a lot of uh, focus on the customers is linked on the energy savings, on energy independence. I don't know how big ratio this is in India, but what I heard about the prices of the energy definitely is lower than in our case. But we have even the farms who are working on heat pumps completely without the boilers, which in our climate is unique. Maybe in your climate not. But in our climate, when we have minus 20 degrees in the winter, that uh, can, be, can be unique. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we use any kind of uh, energy, solar panels, whatever, just to make the, 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 the projects more economical, how to say, efficient. What I heard from the Polish grower depends how old you have the system, that in some, some cases the, all the energy costs, it means water, gas, um, and electricity can be sometimes 10%, but if the, machine, if the farm is done properly with the new technology, can go down even to four. It means on the annual figures, it's really a huge figure. You, you see here the air handling units, they are different one, you know, depends with the preheating, precooling and all the system. We always take into consideration the exact location, the exact climate. We know that you have completely different weather. We know that there's a lot of humidity in the air, but the equipment will be ready for that. Uh, cold storages and shocker, we very, play in Poland, everybody is paying a lot of attention to that, that the mushrooms picked are really quickly cooled down to two degrees and kept in the shocker. And kept to the shocker and then to the cold store, because then we can expand, extend the lifetime. And then it's the very quick delivery to the customer. You know the lifetime of your products. If they are fresh, they must be quickly delivered and simply be on our tables. We produce different kind of shelving, starting from aluminum, magnelis, or all type like uh, hot dip galvanized, but always the base race is with aluminum. We produce plenty of different variety of, of uh, floris. 
starting from the very simply that you put it on the racks to to also with the manual winch currently 80% of the lorries is already equipped with the electrical engine i know you don't need it but anyhow the everybody's struggle and everybody's fighting for the people to keep them working on the farm if they once they trained you know how many people you change how much time you spend to train the staff therefore everybody's focused to attract the working place to make the job easier and the people stay and simply work the the for electricity or automation is going everywhere of course we produce even such trolleys in some countries you know there are the expectation about the safety of low regulation that is going on the floor a uh, very expensive solution in my opinion we uh, we we propose always the underbed watering system you can have us also of course the simple we call it trees and go around but this is fully automized you know you can even from your um, mobile phone you can steer switch on switch off you have the sprinkler cell under bed uh, your grower can check it every time what's going on of course we are the dealer of fancom we work very closely together uh, the climate is very important i could see the farm which are really sorry sorry uh, steered manually nobody can do it for 24 7 nobody can also control the compost uh, without sensors or something like that therefore this is also the quality of the building climate control proper conditions for the mycelium grow and then for the mushroom grow it's really the key of success of course we produce our lamps uh, because they have to be resistant to for the cookout we produce our gates external and internal doors you know the tunnels i showed you before and plenty 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 of small equipment which is needed at mushroom farm and everything of course made of out of stainless steel or aluminium corrosion resistant for also make some spigots by our no production airliners um, air ducts everything is produced uh, in our workshop and the last but not least of course it's not the solution maybe for you at the moment because plenty of the farms is only in the bags but such solution nobody is using currently in europe we feel mostly as i said before phase three on the racks using machines uh, compost is coming in the bulk casing soil is coming us in the bulk or in the big bags and simply with the phase three you fill it one once and you forget you do not have ruffling you don't need anything you know that's uh, you everybody understand you know that where the presentation what is the difference between phase two phase three that's clear that uh, that there is how the world is going in poland we even have phase four it means that you know in the cases you know that uh, the, um, in the on the compost yards um, the mushrooms are incubated they are delivered only to a small mushroom farm this mushroom farm does not require such equipment, only forklift. And after two days, the, the people get the first mushrooms. You know, there is also the two producers in Poland which are making also such kind of service. But let's come back to the machines. You can see the Hercules as the machines could, who can fill together the phase three compost and, and uh, casing soil. O of course, can also fill phase two, but then later after two weeks, you have to put the casing soil on it. Uh, with such machine you can really when the team has experienced thousand square meters growing room it's quite big room you can fill during three or four hours and then you close it and go again you know therefore such machine doesn't make sense for the small farm but if you have 20 30 40 rooms that's uh, that's make a difference and uh, and this is how the you know the filling machine is currently the standard all over the Europe even all over the world a little bit cheaper solution, less a little bit automation and sensor, but also very reliable machines for, for a little bit lower speed. And of course, you need the full bench of the other equipment because the filling, the head filler cannot work alone. It needs some um, hoppers for compost. You need some hoppers for casing soil, some conveyors, some pulling winches that everything is working automatically uh, as uh, you probably could see plenty of such videos, plenty of such farms, but this is everything what we do. It's very important for those machines that uh, everything 
I can say each part of that machine which has contact with compost is made out of stainless steel. Therefore, there is no corrosion at all. Very simply to clean. And you simply go. And um, we, you know, the labor costs are really much, much higher in Europe. Therefore, we really, everybody is playing, paying a lot of attention to that. How quickly they can go to clean the room. If they pay, people are forced to make over hours or not. If they can do another job. This is everything what is focused. Therefore, I agree that you, you maybe do not pay attention because if the salaries are eight times lower, ten times lower, that maybe it's not, not the time. But always, people are an issue on the mushroom farm. This is, they come to the work or they do not come, they pick properly, they deliver you the, the quality or not. They have very big impact of your, on your wallet at the end about the quality of the mushroom, quantity of um, the mushroom picked. Therefore, it's very important to make them good conditions, but first of all, to make the very and or the best you can do conditions for compost and for the mushrooms growing. Therefore, I just wanted to present this, um, uh, this equipment. You know, we have our booth down below. You, if you want, we are, you are invited just for, to discuss with us some, some things more deeply. You can find us in the internet. And together with Andre, we are here just to help you and answer all your questions. Uh, there are some already inquiries coming from India for uh, big projects. People are aware about the investments. Everybody is aware that must spend uh, millions. But of course, we always find a way how to share the, the things, what can we do locally. You have a lot of experts. The engineers we met, for example, last, uh, last week uh, in Pune were really highly qualified. The, the, point, the questions they were asking were really very precise. Therefore, I strongly believe that a lot of things you can do locally. There is also things you don't need to develop something from scratch. There is plenty of solution already developed in the world, but I agree you must adopt it to your local needs, to your local economical situation and to your local raw materials. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Daniel, for your insight about the modern technologies of the project management and the equipment. Uh, you can please. Uh, okay. There are no questions. Yeah. No, the questions will be at the end of the session. So, uh, summing up our last speaker, uh, as we all know that uh, throughout the two days of our intensive discussions and sessions, all of us have. Uh, this kind of feeling that uh, commercial mushroom growing uh, is a complex uh, thing to understand because it is a coordination of so many things to amalgamate and then put them into the right proportions to get the result, desired results. And as I said that I have, I am repeating that, that your uh, uh, environmental control is the yield control of the mushrooms. And uh, uh, broadly speaking, uh, the common man uh, takes it that environment means the temperature. Okay, putting one AC into the room uh, to have the required temperatures will suffice. But that is not the situation. Along with the temperature, we have another two parameters which are to be taken into consideration in uh, accordance with the temperature management at different levels of the mushroom growing. Now, along with the temperature, we have the relative humidity or the moisture content inside the growing rooms at different levels. And then we have the CO2 concentration or the fresh air movement in the growing rooms. This air conditioning is of a unique, uh, what we call HVAC, heating ventilation air conditioning, where we have to take the fresh air at certain levels of the growth to compensate that fresh air, what are the ambient temperatures and how your AC is functioning your temperature fluctuations can uh, uh, directly or indirectly uh, have uh, 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 what impacts on your uh, relative humidity and CO2 concentration at different levels and ultimately they are the working factors which are in favor of your successful mushroom cultivation. So in this context, Mr. Alert Bart from Hancom will be talking about the uh, computerized controls of a mushroom growing system, IPL, PLC based systems, which have a coordination of signaling each and every parameter in accordance to have a very consumed air as per the desired results. Mr. Alert Bart, please, sir. Thank you for the kind 
thank you for the kind introduction. Uh, as mentioned, my name is uh, Bart Aerts. Uh, does the mic not work, eh? It's not working. Hello? Hello? Just, just please come. Ah, okay. Okay, uh, thank you for the uh, nice introduction. Uh, my name is Bart Aerts. I'm responsible within Fancom for sales and also particularly uh, partly for product management. And uh, at first, I want to say thank you to Anarag for uh, his initiative uh, for the first Indian Mushroom Summit. Thank you for uh, Anarag and all the uh, volunteers and everyone who contribute to this very nice uh, conference. So um, India, India is moving uh, to mushrooms. I want to take you with you moving from compass to mushrooms. So, uh, Fancom is a company settled in the Netherlands and uh, we are active in uh, three sectors. Uh, of course, mushrooms, but besides as well in the poultry and pig sector. Our ambition, together with you, is to feed the growing population in the world. The beginning of this year, India passed the population of China and has the highest population in the world. So that needs a kind of intensification and professionalization of the production. And of course, we want to do that on a food safety way, sustainable, efficiency, and uh, it may not uh, affect the environment. Eh? So also the pollution, what is going on over here, we want to reduce energy consumption and uh, uh, do it as sustainable as possible. Fancom is settled in the Netherlands, as I mentioned. We are uh, established in 1977, so I have uh, more than 50, 45 years of experience. And since 97, uh, 1997, we belong to an American-based company, it's called CTB, and um, I want to uh, uh, mention that because it is very important to know we are a very healthy company financially, but we have also a strong model, and that means when you do, um, when you invest in Fancom, it is also a kind of guarantee that you can do that also in the past, in the, in the future, when, uh, when you want to uh, expand your farm or when you need spare parts. So, what keeps a mushroom grower, uh, grower busy? So, his challenge is to have the best possible compass and to have a good quality of mushrooms, of course. Preferably also a very high yield, safe energy, especially nowadays when the prices of energy are going up. A high efficiency, although the labor costs are still very low over here, when uh, in the future, like in other countries, also here, um, the loans will increase. And that means that you need to organize your production very efficiently. And you like to, to control your process 24-7. So what did we do, therefore, to help you? That is that we have climate controllers for each phase of the production, from phase one till harvesting. And it needs to be efficient and as easy as possible for you. So a total solution from phase one till harvesting. Uh, we have a lot of experience. For 45 years of experience, so that means that all the uh, experience which we gathered in the, in the past, we have included that in our systems. Of course, it is also important that the controller is easy to understand. It needs to be a tool which you are free to use. So that is important and um, it is also important that, is, uh, that it is flexible to your local conditions. So that, uh, that, is, that sounds logical, but uh, that, uh, that is a must. And we do not save on quality. 
you are busy with a living product that goes on 24-7, so the controller needs to operate the whole year long. It is a technical product, so I can't guarantee you a 100% uh, 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 guarantee, but I think we reached 99.9. So what did we do to make it more easy for you? So we use less text in our controllers, we use uh, colors, we use symbols, and we use numbers. And in this uh, uh, example, you can see where this fan comes green, everything is okay. In case it is orange, the measurement is too high, and when it is blue, the measurement is too low. We have several controllers for phase one, one controller for phase two and three, one for the growing phase, for watering, and we combine that with data management. Phase one can take place in open, half open, or closed bunkers. Over here, it is allowed to have it in an open bunker, so that makes it uh, much more uh, easy and uh, less expensive. But nevertheless, you need, if you like to control the uh, fermentation phase, of course, as good as possible. So, uh, the controller for phase one is called the 751. It has uh, three adjustable uh, fermentation phases. Um, um, you can uh, adjust the fan uh, for the level or modular uh, um, ventilation um, to reach the optimal uh, compost quality. Over here, some, some pictures at the left hand. Uh, uh, half open bunker and the right hand and complete open bunker and this these are pictures in Belgium at uh, a fully closed bunker and over here uh, the several um, fermentation phases with the compost uh, temperature as well uh, combined with the oxygen content after Finishing phase one, we move to the tunnels for phase two and maybe also for phase three. That is a little bit up to you, uh, uh, the kind of uh, the working. Uh, if you are doing the uh, spawner and the growing rooms, that is also possible, of course. But the computer is suitable to do phase two and phase three in the tunnel um, uh, to reach an uh, optimum uh, substrate quality. Um, we do that uh, uh, um, uh, very, uh, very slowly. We start with, uh, with leveling, that the temperature is uh, uh, equal in the whole batch, and then we heat up for pasteurization. Um, we have uh, settings for uh, uh, 11 production uh, phases, from filling from the uh, fresh compost to, uh, to cookout. And by doing so, you are able to accelerate your uh, composting process. And that is a very interesting one, because when you can speed up, you are also increasing the efficiency of your tunnel. So here, a picture of a very large facility. Um, on, uh, on each, each tunnel has another uh, air handling unit, so you see this is a very large, uh, large facility. Over here, some additional uh, pictures uh, with uh, also uh, um, air handling unit and also for uh, uh, a picture where uh, a tunnel is uh, filled. Um, and over here, uh, uh, an overview of all the, uh, all the phases in the, in the tunnel with the uh, uh, compost temperature, inlet temperature, C uh, 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 CO2, uh, fresh air, uh, the fan, and uh, time. So uh, you can actually very good see what is, uh, is going on. After finishing phase two or phase three, it's a little bit uh, depending on your management, what uh, I already mentioned, um, uh, the compass goes to the growing room 
um, and um, you can control with our controller always uh, two rooms, uh, two, uh, maximum two rooms. That counts also for the terminal and for the bunker computer as well, one or maximum two. Um, the computer has uh, a kind of intelligence uh, in it uh, uh, based on the Mollier diagram and it is able to steer the uh, climate uh, in a very efficient way. So uh, um, uh, in, in that direction, that energy costs are as low as possible. So when it is not needed to cool down, uh, then uh, and, uh, you, and the outside air is uh, suitable, then the, uh, then the system will choose for outside air. But the opposite is, of course, also possible. The controller for the growing rooms is called the 765 um, and uh, of course it's able to control the climate in uh, uh, all type of uh, uh, air conditioning systems also in all regions. Eh? So uh, what uh, uh, Mr. Daniel already mentioned, uh, it is depending on the local conditions that the equipment of the air handling unit is uh, uh, calculated to the local conditions. Uh, so that is very, very important. Uh, we make use of, uh, of 10 growing phases, so you are able to, uh, to control it uh, very, uh, very accurately. Uh, for example, a CO2 shot is uh, uh, available. Um, and uh, of course, uh, we do it in a very efficient uh, way. Um, yeah, I can tell a lot about it, but uh, with regard to the time, I will not uh, uh, a, a little bit speed up. Over here are uh, some pictures uh, at the left hand uh, where the air unit is uh, mounted uh, in the central corridor. Nowadays uh, where uh, uh, growing rooms are uh, becoming bigger, the air handling unit is very often mounted on the top in the middle of the growing room. And that is a picture which you see on the right hand. Oh yeah, here by uh, um, uh, a picture of uh, a growing room uh, at the right hand, uh, the shelving system where um, uh, mushrooms are automatically harvested in the Netherlands. The labor costs are very high um, and that uh, forced uh, uh, growers uh, to uh, stop with manual picking and start with uh, um, uh, uh, automatically harvesting, so uh, it's a kind of a ch chopper which moves over the beds and cuts the mushrooms in one time. As mentioned, uh, also for the growing phase, we have uh, a lot of phases to, to, uh, to control uh, um, uh, the climate. Uh, for each phase, uh, compost temperature, air temperature, RH, CO2, the fresh air, the fan, and time. Uh, I, maybe I forgot one thing, maybe it's, oh, excuse me, I go in the wrong, oh, no, I made a mistake. <laughs> excuse me for that. Um, I will go very quickly. I'd like to explain you something about the growing room. So, um, over here you see the air handling unit and fresh air comes from the top and return air comes from, uh, from the growing room. Um, and over here there are contra-rotating valves. Uh, the sum of the, of the inlet air is always 100%. So when the fresh air is 60, by the counter-rotating valves, the return air is automatically 40%. So when the air uh, needs to cool down over here, uh, maybe, maybe to reduce uh, the moisture content, then uh, you have first the chiller and after the chiller the, uh, the heating coil. Uh, and afterwards, uh, it is possible to humidify the, uh, the inlet air. Um, that can be um, with cold water, in case you want to warm up the, uh, the air in the growing room, then it is uh, possible to do it with steam. Um, the 
air goes by the uh, via the ducts on the left and on the right way uh, it's uh, blown in the cone rooms and in the middle normally in the middle there is an, uh, an exhaust uh, for the return air or to outside um, and by doing the uh, by mounting the exhaust in the middle you get a, a, a kind of uh, circulation of, of the air over the beds Um, yes, um, of course, uh, watering is also very important. Um, that can also be uh, computer controlled uh, over here, a system with a spraying tray. Um, and the computer um, uh, is uh, flexible, so you can uh, 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 do a setting for amount of water. And the velocity of the of the spraying tree is uh, uh, is uh, adapted to that in amount of water. All these computers can be combined in PC software, so that you have a very clear overview of what is going on. Of course, it is also possible to look what is uh, the, uh, what you did in the future um, the advantage of uh, of using a, a PC software that is that you can store all the data which are measured so um, uh, every sensor can be measured and uh, you can uh, store the data so you 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 get a lot of information um, and it is also possible to push that information when you have an own dashboard to push that information to uh, to uh, to your own uh, to your own dashboard uh, uh, automatically. So that makes uh, life uh, life very easy, and that gives also the possibility to uh, to learn. Because there was um, uh, just before there was a question. Uh, uh, yeah, what do we do uh, with uh, with all the measurements? Yeah, you can collect them. And, and, uh, and save all that information and, and show it in graphs. So that, uh, uh, and graphs is a, is a picture and that tells much more than only a table. Um, finally, we have uh, also a remote control. So uh, we have an app and uh, that app that uh, uh, is uh, available for uh, uh, iOS and Android uh, mobile devices. So you are in touch with your farm anytime and anywhere where you have internet access. Um, you have the same possibilities when you are in front of the controller, so you do not only see on your mobile device, you can also add, uh, adjust settings so that makes it very comfortable, like you are here in this, uh, this audience, that you do not have to worry to go home. No, you can quickly uh, take a look and, uh, and, and have the confirmation that you can afford uh, a glass of beer or something else. So um, um, this was it uh, from uh, my side. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Alec, for your insightful discussions regarding the application of HACM uh, equipment, the computerization, which is a very important factor of the modern mushroom growing. Uh, how beautifully he explained about the growing room being maintained uh, by way of uh, fan speeds uh, and the uh, positioning of ducts and the air uh, currents so that a desirable climate of uh, positive situations both in terms of uh, macroclimate and microclimate. There are two climates inside a growing room. One is the macroclimate, the overall climate, and then one is the microclimate which is between the uh, one growing bag, uh, which is very important for the pins to develop and for the healthy growth of the mushrooms. And how this system can achieve us the desirable levels of both uh, the climatic conditions and also the ease of working from the Android apps from our home to see the data, assess the data or even change the minimum and maximum levels of uh, your requirements and uh, this gives a feedback data also for your assessment and for later sharing also. Thank you very much sir.
Now the session is open for the discussions, question and answer session. Questions are welcome. Mm -hmm. Okay, please. There's one at the last row. Uh, uh, thank you very much for the sessions. Uh, my name is Mario. Uh, my question I think it's from the metric that uh, uh, came from Poland that you have around 40 million people in Poland. Uh, well, if you only account for the farmers in India alone, we are around 70 million or more, just the farmers, the rest of the people are not counted still. So my point there is that uh, from the technology that you showed us, it is wonderful, it is a reliable technology when I am planning for a farm with high investment, a farm which is supposed to be using continuously for 10 years, uh, it's, it's the right way to go. But uh, the solution that we are looking probably for in our market, uh, likely how this unknown six said, the most unknown said that they said, we should approach the government uh, on the board, but I want to bring the conversation to the technology part where instead of having really large scale farming, our farmers, uh, if they need a more TNC simple waste control like how Mr. Vijay said, if we need a more TNC waste simple control that can be done for, uh, for, for addressing the local demand uh, than uh, addressing like a more large scale demand, would you, would, would you, what would be the final insight onto uh, how that can be implemented or uh, how, how that should be looked at rather than looking at just big tech uh, can we also look at small to medium tech where I am not looking at a, uh, at, a, uh, at a showroom that does not do more than 500 kg uh, a week let us say. Okay. Uh, as I understood that uh, you are just targeting the small farmers in India under their own conditions and uh, uh, already certain uh, people from IITMs have developed uh, certain uh, versions of the software and hardware which is compatible with uh, one growing room or four growing rooms and that is already under the final trials of its uh, application and soon you will come up with a version like that which will suit your requirements and also uh, give a control over the conditions of environmental control and other things in future also. I am very sure that many people are working on this issue and soon we will have a system in place. Any more questions? Okay, uh, with a very scintillating session and I am very pleased. Yes, please. Please, sir. Give me an opportunity to get a couple more and... Yes, sir. Yes, yes, please. Sure. Yes, please, you may come. I have a few points to make, which I thought this would be... I would like to introduce you, sir. No, 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 you don't have to introduce no, no. me. Sit down. I want to. I want to, sir. Okay, okay, sorry. Uh, sir is my mycology teacher. He taught me mycology in my uh, uh, college. So he's the man behind pushing me into mushrooms. Okay, sir. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> so, dear Bart, Daniel, Vijay, Anurag, Manmohan, and Stuart, it was great attending your session. It was a brilliant session, one of the best sessions I've heard. And uh, 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 all my esteemed uh, delegates, Dr. Rekha, who's the champion of all this. Uh, Dr. Pyle, I don't see her here, all the esteemed uh, guest faculties and delegates. I'm overwhelmed uh, by the whole conference, this session in particular, this I attended fully. I heard Bard, he's Bart. You know, there's a term which is very popular, hot topic these days is Bard, B-A-R-D. All of you must have heard of it, this is a Google AI tool. So people are taking help of it. So uh, I, I want to congratulate Bart or Bard <laughs> for all the systems he's doing. It's almost like an AI tool, which has the answers for many, many things. And I think Indian collaborators should make full use of this technology, what he's thrown on. Uh, in such a very, very small scale, they are doing the whole systems of the mushroom. So he has captured this and India should take full use of it and I hope to see many collaborations. I won't be here tomorrow so I just I was overwhelmed uh, and I wanted to share a few thoughts. This conference has been great. 
an amazing conference, one of the best I attended in Mushrooms. And uh, they have done a tremendous job to put together such an amazing conference. And the whole credit goes to the team of the Shaheed Rajguru College, a great team uh, led by a very uh, competent uh, leader, uh, Dr. Payal, Dr. Rekha and her team. Anurag, of course, is my student. I, I, I want to hats off to his uh, uh, efforts and things. I just uh, wanted to tell a few things uh, about uh, Anurag. Uh, I, that was year 80, uh, 1987. I got appointed in Delhi University and my job was to establish a microbiology department. There was no microbiology in Delhi University at that point in time. So I was one of the teachers. I was not the sole teacher. There were two more colleagues of mine who were given this responsibility to start a microbiology uh, department. And that is how BSc Honours in Microbiology started in our college. So uh, Anurag was my third year batch student. And I am uh, going uh, down the memory lane and I'm trying to see what happened during that time. We were trying to build that facility, trying to build lab, trying to uh, teach students how to inoculate. I remember holding hand of Anurag, telling him how to inoculate. And this is the stage where he has reached. He's now a full industrialist. It makes me very happy. I just want to put three students whom I caught very young. 87 batch, Deepak Nilani. So there was, this was just a batch of six students. And Deepak's a sparkle. So I was teaching three subjects at that time, biotechnology, virology, and mycology. I take just three examples, three students. Biotechnology, Deepak Nilani went on to do his PhD with Dr. Sahani at Imtech. And he developed a technology, what we call a streptokinase, which was developed in the US to, you know, uh, dissolve the clots, what we have in coronary heart diseases. So he developed a blockbuster with his guide and went on very successfully and this technology sold like anything. So that was a commercial part of it. He is now a professor, full-fledged professor at the Purdue University in the US. My second student, whom I want to recall, was Sanjay Fogart. I taught him virology, of course I taught all, to all these students. There was a difference. He stood out among all the students. He went on to rub shoulders with Bob Gallo, Robert Gallo, I think you must be knowing, who deserved a Nobel Prize, though he didn't get it, for discovering HIV. So much was his interest in virus research and he used to come to me and you said, Sir, aapne jo virology padhaya, that has taken me that far. He rubbed shoulders with Rob Gallo, worked his, with him, and then joined uh, the Smith Klein Beecham group, GSK, Sanofi, and he is at the top. He is the CEO of right, uh, at Sanofi right now. And so, uh, I've just heard that he has moved to GSK. Coming to mycology, where did I score in that? So my report card is Anurag. I taught him mycology and he was a gem. These three students whom I'm mentioning you, this is the whole class is standing in front of, is sitting in front of me. And remember, a teacher looks in the eyes of every student. No one is going to be missed out. These three students that I just talked about, they had that sparkle in their eyes when I was teaching them. I could see that thing in the eyes and I knew that these three students are going to do big. And I'm very, very happy for Anurag. My full compliments to him. I'm so happy. And he is a very humble student. He still maintains that guru uh, shishya parampara that we have in our country which we are so proud of. Thank you Anurag so much. 
and uh, the whole team of uh, the mycology my my <coughs> wife is also a mycologist <coughs> so did she did her phd with the in the same lab where dr pail was trained pail mago and uh, many many uh, the top uh, mycology teachers in the delhi university were my wife's colleagues uh, dr surinder who is the principal of the khalsa college same uh, lab then dr pail mago as i mentioned <laughs> and then uh, rajini gupta who is at the kirwadi mal college she has written a textbook on mycology so that was my second love you can say mycology and still i have a great love for this subject though my first love is virology but i have a uh, great uh, love for this and for the love i am here uh, of the mycology so again i want to uh, really congratulate the whole team and dr rekha and her team for putting up this show and i wish them all the success in future endeavors i want them to uh, take this torch be a torch bearer and spread the knowledge of mycology in this country thank you very much thank you sir thank you thank you very much for your exceptionally encouraging words about the session and the conference as well and we are very highly delighted Uh, to know about more about Anurag Saxena ji today from the days he was a student and uh, he is a really made you proud and we all proud at this juncture of life by uh, coming to the level of expectations you had in your opinion at that time thank you very much sir so any more questions we can take the questions or we can uh, close the session uh, on a very good note that this session of vibrant people on my left and right and i am very thankful to chair this session and hope for a nice day tomorrow at the concluding session of this india mushroom summit thank you very much i thank all the speakers for sharing their insightful words with us may i now request dr aarti yadav to kindly join us to present a token of appreciation to our esteemed speakers Mr Vijay Mr Manmohan Malik Mr Stuart Whitehall Mr Anurag Saxena <laughs> Mr Daniel Thank you Mr Earth Bart Thank you everyone. With that, day 2 of India Mushroom Summit 2023 comes to an end. It's been extremely enlightening. I would like to thank the entire organizing team, speakers, participants as well as our sponsors, Milky Way Technologies Limited India, Projects Agro Projects Poland and Zhangshou Setrise Industry China for their contributions to today's event. Before we part our ways for the day I would like to invite all of you to join us for the tea break the tea break is set up in the designated area i encourage you to take this moment to enjoy some tea and reflect on the insights gained during the day thank you once again for joining us for an integral day and we will meet you soon tomorrow at day 3 this is akshita sharma and niyati arora Tomorrow's session of day three will start at 9:30 a.m. So we are signing off for the day. Thank you very much. <laughs>